Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Childers here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased price action analysis and holy moly what a beautiful way to end last week's trading day, to end Friday's session with the squeeze, the squeeze man, they squeeze to the top, they heard a lot of bears off, you know not much with the spy but holy moly look at triple Q, look at triple Q, look at that beautiful move, squeeze, this is why we stay unbiased, guys. This is why we stay unbiased. There's a lot of people out there for some reason. You know, they're very bearish because of the news. You know, and they don't learn their lesson from the from previous mistakes. You know, remember back in Mar uh, mid to late March, they had that b the banking issues that they were scaring us with. And what did the price action do? It just went up, right? So you got to ask yourself, what would have made you more money? Following the price action or following YouTubers calling the top thinking they can see the future. Okay, yes, I'm a YouTuber, but I ain't no way I'm going to tell you guys that I can see the future. I don't know what's going to happen, but what I do here on my channel is I identify the price action trade setups so that we can make money. All right, I do half the work for you guys and it's, you guys got to do the other half, right, which is me. I've identified the setups, the levels, and then it's up to us as individual traders to trade it unbiasedly, playing it level to level and protecting our gains, leaving runners and all that happy stuff. Okay? So for example, I wrote here on my Discord, 416 is first resistant. Watch for the uh, breakout to put 417.5 and 418.2 in play. Okay? 413.5 to 414 is first support. If it fails, then we would target lower price action. So we just wait. We just wait for what the price action is going to do. If it would have broke down 414, 413.5, I would have short. But instead, the price action cleared the first resistance of 416. And it did not look back. It cleared my level 417.5. And it put higher levels in play. And it did not look back. It was a great trading day. If you traded unbiasedly. Bulls can make money. Bears can make money. But if, if bulls and bears traded on, uh, you know, they traded biasly, they're going to get smoked. All right. Look at what happened back in May 18th, May 19th. All right. Remember when the market uh, rallied from this trend line? We broke out the trend line. Bears got smoked. Bull bias traders probably played it. But then they probably got smoked when the, when the market retraced. And because of this, they were playing bull bias lead. They probably didn't cut their loss. They got smoked. That when the market rallied back on Thursday and Friday, they couldn't buy the dip. And if you was a bear on Thursday or Friday, you got smashed. And I'm not happy about that. I'm not here to make fun. I'm here to give you guys the truth. And the truth is the price action, the market does not care what we think or what we feel. It's a lot of times... You know, the news say one thing, it goes the opposite. They're trying, these market makers do not love us. They don't. So we need to love ourselves and follow the shepherd. The shepherd is the price action. The price action will guide us. We have to follow the price action using the levels, using the structures, Fibonacci levels, whatever. And do it unbiasedly. And that's how we make money in this market. No greed, no fear. The people that are bearish right now are filling you with fear. The people that are bullish right now are filling you with greed. None of them knows what's going to happen in the future. All we can do is identify the setups, the levels, do our price action analysis, our technical analysis, our due diligence, even fundamental, and identify where we will cut loss. Risk management. All right? That's the best we can do. And it's been working successfully for sheeps. Bulls got crushed. Bears got crushed. But sheeps, it's all about reacting. Okay? So last week, on th I think it was Thursday's video, I mentioned to you guys, we recaptured this trend line here. All right? We gapped down, gave up in, in the gap down below my pink trend line. Back tested this blue trend line here. We, you know, we cleared this blue trend line back on May 17th. We back tested it as a support. It held. So I mentioned that when we gap back up, 
that we recaptured it. That's a false breakdown setup. And to be bullish. And Discord members, if you guys, and, and Substack mem uh, subscribers as well. If you read my Substack. I wrote that in the bull case. And it worked out beautifully. All we needed was the next setup. All right. So now here we have a double top. Critical resistance has been touched. 420.7. I was watching the 420 level, but it keeps getting sell pressure from that 420.7 level. So I need to pay attention to that. Okay. So we got a potential double top. If you are bearish, you need confirmation. Just because we got a double top does not mean we're going to go down. All right, it's just a setup, but we need confirmation. So what does that mean? Well, we closed on Friday at 420.2 cents. So that's that's a pathetic breakout, but that's technically still a close above 420. So two things I'll be watching. All right, two things I'd be watching if I was a bear. If we break above 420.7, I would play the false breakout setup of 427, and I would short that. All right. The reason is because a lot of time with these double tops just above it, maybe up to the 422 gap fill, there are a bunch of liquidity there. All right. Liquidity builds up. There are sell, uh, you know, there's sell orders there uh, from the retail. So market makers might want to push that and hit those stop losses. And that'll confirm that it's a stop loss hunt if it breaks back below 420.7. So a uh, false breakout setup of 420.7, I would short. Now, if it doesn't break 420.7 and it heads back down, we'll know this to be true when it starts breaking down support level. Breaking down 420 would cancel Friday's breakout. And if it breaks below 418.2, that's a critical level. 418.2, that purple line, 418.2. I have FIB levels from March low, the COVID low, March 2020 low, up to all-time high. So we got the close above that FIB level. So obviously, if we break back below that, that would be a false breakout. And in my opinion, would trigger more downside. And it definitely would trigger for me to enter puts if we break back below 418.2. Okay, you see, I'm a sheep. I'll, I'll, I'm giving you guys bearish setups. But if there is no bearish setup in real time, don't trade it. Don't try to enter puts when there's no bearish setup. You're going to get played. But I'm giving you the bearish setup in case... It happens like if we break back below 418.2, you'll know like, oh snap, this could be a false breakout. I should enter puts here and look to take profits at the next target level. All right. So below 418.2, I have 417.5, 416. And remember the FIB level of the bear market or the downtrend from all time high down to October low. 50% FIB levels at 414. So I've, like obviously if we break below 414 that's another false breakout setup based on another structure or another fib level that would be very bearish that would be tell us hey let's enter another put or let's keep holding the puts that we have now that's how we follow the price action all right so if you're bearish like i said watch for a false breakout of the 420.7 level or watch for the breakdown of 418.2 417.5 416 and especially 414 below 414 i will favor 408 being tested but we do have 412 and 410 in route first okay and if we break below 414 again i'm favoring i mean i did say i favor uh 408 being tested but i don't think that's gonna hold i think we will go lower down to 404 ish okay that's just my opinion but that's only if we break down 414 if we break down 418.2 i'll play shorts level to level Maybe down to 416 or something. 417.5 is least some runner. But definitely below 414 would be bullish because that's a Fibonacci level based on the downtrend. Okay, remember, we're in the golden zone. The golden zone is the 50% Fib level to the 61.8 Fib level. Okay, uh, I got it on Google right here. It's the golden zone on Fibonacci retracement. All right, it's the golden Fibonacci ratio of 61.8%. Okay, and it's a bunch of math. It's a bunch of math. Okay, uncle's not here to do math. I'm here to do charting. So yeah, look up about Fibonacci if that's something you're interested in, okay? I'm just planting seeds right now. But most important thing is if you want to be bearish, you got to wait for the right setup. All right? Now, if you are bullish and you want to follow the trend, all right, you as well got to follow the price action and use the setups. All right? So we did clear 420. We did clear 418.2. So if 
Spy decides to pull back and we got a false breakdown because I don't like entering direct off support because I don't know if we're going to get a dead cat bounce or what. But I do like to play false breakdowns. If we break back below 418.2 and then it recaptures, I use the 15 to 30 minute chart. So if, if, if the price closes below 418.2 on the 15 minute chart and then recaptures and close back above 418.2 on the 15 minute chart, I would look to long. That's false breakdown setup. I'll look to take probably around 420. So yeah, double top at 420.7. We see how, you know, it's decent selling pressure at the 420.7 level. That, that needs to clear. All right, if we get a false breakout setup, yeah, that's that's bearish, but it's not guaranteed. So if it clears and you long that, I would definitely leave my stop loss like below, you know, maybe 420.5, around 420 to play the breakout and cancel, try to cancel that double top, and I'll target 422 for the gap fill. Can we finally fill that gap? That gap came from August 19th of last year. And if 422 clears, we have another gap all the way up to 427. Is That's from... Uh, this one is from August 18th, the day before. So a couple of gaps up there, all right? But if you want to be bullish, what needs to clear next is 420.7 and 422 to target more upside, all right? Keep in mind, if you like trading FIB levels, the 61.8 FIB levels at 429.6, all right? That is the next critical FIB level on SPY. But like I said, 420.7, 422 needs to clear if we even think about the 61.8 FIP level being tested, all right? So I hope you guys got the message. Follow the price action, all right? The price action is the shepherd. It guides the flock, All the but the flock still needs to walk the walk, all right? The flock still needs to walk the walk. I bring you to the river, but you still need to drink the water. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Drink the water, all right? Rock. Oh, man, I was going to talk trash about another YouTuber but I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. All right. His name, what's his name rhymes with? On Talker. Yeah, On Talker. His name rhymes with On Talker. Let's go Triple Q. The guy, I was, ooh. One of my Discord members was telling me, go check out On Talker. So I went to check out On Talker. And On Talker, he freaking called the top when Triple Q was around 327. Triple Q, the guy said it in his video. I'm going to call the top. I'm calling the top one of the NASDAQ when Triple Q's around 327. Look what happened since then. Okay? Bears got smacked. They got crushed. They got squeezed out. This does not make me happy because I know a lot of bear bias traders got hurt, and that does not make me happy. All right? I'm, but check it out, guys. Let's just focus on business. All right? Because this trading stuff can be very emotional sometimes, I tell you. Especially, especially when... Uh, anyways... Here's what's most important. We got the breakout of that multi-year trend line. That's why Uncle Charles was bullish last week, okay? That's why I was bullish. I wrote here on Triple Q. We're in breakout mode, all right? Because of this, I am leaning bullish, all right? And I had the bull case. As long as above 339, 341 is next. Resistant, if cleared, look, you know, we got to higher targets, okay? With 349 as my highest target. Bear case was if 339 fail, lower targets wouldn't play. All right, so I wasn't trading this bull bias or bear bias. I was just following the price action. If it would have broke down 339, I would have looked to short. Instead, it cleared 341, and holy moly, it hit my 349 target. All right, 349.25 is as high as it went. All right, we, speaking of golden zone, look at this. 61.8 FIB levels at 349.7. All right, so is this the time to get bearish on the triple Q? Now, I tell you guys, I don't like calling the tops, all right? But based on Fibonacci, the Fibonacci golden rules and all that happy stuff, the 61.8 Fib level is a good area to, you know, call a top. I don't recommend calling a top, but if you're going to call a top, you might as well do it at very critical resistant levels. Now, the only way I will trust a rejection here is if it breaks down support. This is why I don't like to call a top, because if it's truly the top, then you don't, hit, you don't have to enter at the top. If it's truly the top, there's going to be so much shorting opportunity because it's the top. So you don't need to get in at the top. You just need to get in when there's strength. All right? Just because something is expensive don't mean it's time to short it. Expensive can get more expensive. Cheap can get more cheap. Just because something is cheap don't mean it's a good time to, to long or buy it. 
cheap can get more cheap, expensive can get more expensive. So what I'm saying is, if Triple Q clears that 61.8 FIB level at 349.7, I am not going to argue with the price action. I will long it. And if I long it, I will not be getting greedy with it. Okay, I'm going to target the first, I'm going to take profit at the first level. 349.7 to 350 level. Clear 350. 352.7 would be my first target with 356.6. And then the gap fill at 360-ish would be in play, guys. I'm not going to argue with the price action. Blame the market makers. Don't hate the player, hate the game. All right? But I would be very surprised if that happens. I would be surprised. I'm not going to lie. If we clear that level, I'd be surprised. If it, if it breaks out, I'm not going to argue with it. I'm going to long it. And I will cut loss if it doesn't work out. If it's a false breakout, I'm not just going to sit there crying. Oh, we got a false breakout. No, I'm going to play that false breakout. If I long it and it don't work out, I'm going to cut loss. And then I'm going to switch over to the bear side and play the false breakout. Because that's what sheeps do. We don't care. We don't care if it goes up or down. I'm going to play the sheep style the way I've been playing it for seven years of trading. Five years technically because my first two years I sucked. Anyways, I will trust a rejection here if it break down support. I have support at uh, 347. Okay. 345, 343, 341, which was the previous high. And then below 341... I would target 339, a previous high as well from, uh, what day is that? May 22nd. But below 339, I would favor a back test of the multi-year trend line. All right? The multi-year trend line is at three, uh, 336. If we go to a weekly chart, the breakout looks so much more beautiful. It looks so much more cleaner from my multi-year trend line. So if we look on the weekly chart, multi-year trend line is at 336. To 336.5 zone. I would not be surprised if Triple Q pulls back and needs to cool his RSI down a bit. And remember, it doesn't have to. It's, you know, oversold, overbought are not buy or sell signals. They are just conditions. All right. They're just conditions. So, and when it's in that condition, we want to be a little more cautious of it could, it could chop to cool down the RSI or it could reverse or pull back. All right. So we just want to be prepared. All right. So, like I said, if it rejects here, it, you need to break down support, but the main support for next week that bulls need to hold is 336. If it breaks back below 336, I would be bare biased on the triple Q. Makes sense, guys. Price action, unbiased price action analysis, guys. It's beautiful, it works. It's better than bag holding and trading biasly, being down 10,000, 20,000, and then continuing to hold because you hope your favorite YouTuber. Um, on talker is correct you get what i mean we just want the price action to be correct look at this false breakdown setup for iwm holy moly now that's another problem with the price action that's the downside sometimes the price action changes its mind but that's why we have to cut loss because i mentioned a breakdown of 175 i would target the 172 to 172.5 zone and it only got to 170 uh, 72.7 didn't quite hit my target and look what happened the next day Recapture 175 minutes to close uh, around 176. So that's a false breakdown setup. So if you short it, hopefully you took profits close to the, the target zone. But if you didn't, hopefully even more so, you cut loss and maybe even switch sides to play the false breakdown setup. So as long as this false breakdown setup holds, that's bullish. All right. So as long as above 175, that's bullish. Look what happened on SPY uh, when, re when we recaptured. The pink trend line. The multi-month trend line. Okay. False breakdown setup on Thursday, Friday. It showed follow through. So be careful with IWM. I had a false breakdown on last Friday. So be careful if it shows follow through. It needs to clear 176 to go fill the gap at 177.5. And then target 179.6. That's 38.2 FIB level. Now if it breaks back down below 175. That's your indicator that this was a false breakout or a false recapture. Because they happened. And to get back to being bearish, okay? Sometimes market makers, they got to fake out retail before they make the first move, all right? They do it all the time. Here is Tesla. Beautiful trade setup on Tesla, all right? In my, I got a room in my Discord dedicated to Tesla. I mentioned with the successful back test of the 50 daily moving average, from here, bulls need to clear 186 to put higher targets in play. And boy, did it clear 186, it cleared 186, went as high as 198.6. It gave me the third test 
gave me the third test of this blue trend line here that started from February 16 high, connect to March 31st high, and now we got the test on May 26. All right, so breakout level of this um, this trend line is 195. All right, above 195, I'll favor a test of the 200 day we moving average. Currently around 200, but it could slope down a little bit. And obviously above the 200 daily moving average, a recapture that would be pretty bullish, and I would favor a test of 207 ish. All right, if you want to get bearish and you want to trust the rejection of this trend line, it needs to break down support. So below 190.3 on Tuesday, I would be bearish on Tesla. Look to short below 190.3 with 180, uh, 187.5, 186, and possibly drop back and test 182.5 and maybe back test that 50 daily moving average. Again, bulls, if we test again, you guys might may not get as lucky. All right, so 190.3 needs to hold on any pullback and both need a breakout of 195, all right? So above 190.3, stay long. Below 190.3, go short, all right? Here is Apple. Showed a little follow through. Apple's not as volatile as like, you know, like Tesla and stuff. But this is pretty decent for, for Apple, okay? All year long, whoever's been shorting Apple has been getting crushed, all right? This, you see this orange trend line? It's kept Apple up in... An uptrend all 2023 all right we got that another test of that trend line back up last Wednesday we got the bounce once again clearing 174 that is now support and if it wants higher highs if Apple wants higher highs it needs to take out the previous high which was at 176.39 breakout of 176.39 and we can go up high to 178 and 180 all right below 174 I will be a little bearish but the breakdown of this infamous trend line here, it's now at 172.5. So on any pullback, 172.5 needs to hold. All right, we already recently tested it, so bulls preferably we don't test it again. But if it does, watch what happens. If it bounces off 172.5 and then recaps 174, that would be bullish. If it stays above 174 and clears 176.3, that's bullish, all right? I'll, I'll be very bearish if we break down uh, 172.5, targeting 170.3. 170.3 is a fib level, so below that, that will be very bearish. I'll favor the gap fill down to 165.7-ish, all right? Let's take a look at some inverses. Well, here is the, the dollar. It recaptured the 23.6 fib level last week. It captured it, recaptured it Thursday, and it, you know, it... Close again on Friday. So 104.1 is must hold level for bulls. As long as above, stay uh, stay bullish on, on the dollar. Okay, next resistance is 105. Now, if you want to get bearish on the dollar, it needs to drop back below 104.1. And we can test 103.4. That will put it back in play. But below 103.4 is a breakdown of this green trend line again. And if it breaks it down, we're likely going to go see lower lows. All right. So below 104.1 and 103.3 is bearish on the on the DXY. Stay bullish above 104.1. Watch for the breakout of 104.4 and 105. All right. Here is the VIX. Um, yeah, the VIX dump. It did a normal thing. It's good. Um, it inversed the spy. Spy was pumping. VIX was dumping. Uh, yeah, back below that 18.5, 18.3 level that it's you know it struggled to clear. For a while, we cleared it, but it didn't last that long. So VIX is in false breakout mode. As long as below 18.5 highest, or 19 highest actually, that's you know that's bearish on the VIX. So we could see more downside. You know we had a bounce off of 17 again, but if 17 fails, we're likely going back down to 16 and maybe 15.5 previous low back in May uh, May 1st. All right, to be bullish, it needs to recapture 19. 20 and 21.3 all right guys here is let's take a look at some dark pools okay look at the seek you know if you guys know make sure you guys if you don't know about dark pools definitely look it up explain but usually these are orders that institution are doing they do it secretly in the dark that's why it's called dark pool all right usually they, they do it like the day before um you know 24 hours before the next trading session when they make these type of trades we don't know if it's a buy or a sell, but what we can do is we take a look at the data, 3.3 billion in premium, right? 
414.65 was the activity. We got to use price action to help us guide it. So Friday in pre-market, the low um, was around there, around 414, 414.2-ish, okay, before it just bounced. So that would tell me, hey, the, you know, based on the price action, based on the levels, these must have been institution buying, all right? And once again, it ran into the 420.2 level, all right? So, yeah, if you want to get bearish at these dark pool levels, all right, you can use my levels. You can also use these dark pool levels to give you more assistance. Obviously, retail traders lose a lot more than institute. So, I don't know where these institute took their profits, but I know they're not going to, you know, trade foolishly like retail traders. So, this tells me if it drops back below 414.65, which is a few cents off of my FIB level, that would be bearish. Because, you know, I doubt the, the, the institute's going to take a loss. All right. So, obviously, if it dropped back below, it's probably because they knew it was going to happen. You know, so they took profits. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, it's, it's about, weigh, you know, weighing the odds, weighing the, weighing the probability. Who's going to lose? Institution or retail? It's more likely that retail will lose. So that, that's why I say below the dark pool order, especially when there's a big order like this, um, that would be bearish, okay? Also worth noting, we had 900 million in premium. Once again, at that 420 level, all right? The SPY, where did the SPY close at? 420.02 cents. Where did these dark pool orders come in? 420.02 cents. Almost a billion dollars worth. So is dark pool, the dark pool sell there? All right. Obviously it wouldn't be, they didn't sell everything. Maybe they're leaving runners. Or maybe it's another institution starting to accumulate, you know, shorts position. Or maybe they're buying, they're, they're catching FOMO. We don't know. But that's, that's the thing. We use this data and just like RSI, MACD or anything, we combine it with the price action. So we know that there's activity at 420. So obviously, if it drops below 420, it's as likely that this 900 million in premium, the sells were by the institute. Okay, is it? Do we know for sure it's by the institute? We don't know for sure it's by the institute. But like I said, wait. You know, we gotta weigh the probabilities. Who's more likely to lose and make foolish trade? Dumb money. Dumb money is us retail. Right, so the price action drops. I highly doubt that it was, you know, dumb money short in 900 million worth. It was likely the institute. Does that make sense, guys? All right, I hope that helped. So, yeah, let's go to the option flow. All right, and I like to look for the spy and filter for 500k premiums or above because I want to see what the big money's doing. Look at this. 88% in the puts, over 266,000 compared to the calls. And, and here's the thing, guys. Most of these puts are sweep orders. Sweep orders. Very aggressive. All right? Very aggressive. Puts, 400 strike price, 4 or 5 strike price, all right? They're puts. Now, where do we see a lot of these entries at? I'm seeing a lot of these entries around 420, guys. Around 419.9 to the 420 zone, all right? So I like to use these option flow to help me identify support and resistant levels as well. So I look at where a lot of these contracts were entered. The spot, 420, 419.9, all right? 420.5, you see in this, big money. Look at these contract sizes. Look at these contract sizes, the volume, the size. This is not a joke. Look at this call. June 2nd, 428, over 24,000 in size. Somebody's going to get smoked. But what this tells me, we're seeing this much volume, seeing this much activity, you know, a lot more puts than calls. Holy moly. That tells me that there's going to be some good volatility next week. All right? Because a lot of these dates are for like later, like mid-June. All right? This is May 30th. That's a call, though. A lot of these puts are for early June, for early June to mid June, so that tells me there's gonna be some volatility, and I'm very excited for it. Let's see what Triple Q says. Triple Q not as impressive as Spy, 
I mean, the price action is much more impressive than SPY, but the option fold, not as impressive. Nothing that we see in here. Seeing some split orders, seeing some sweep, seeing some block orders. Nothing with over big in size. All right, but overall bearish. IWM. All right, 86% in the puts. 27,000 contracts compared to 4,000. That's a big difference. Seen a lot of puts. 167 strike price. This one over 9,000 in size. All right, for July 21st, though, any close dated one? The closest date one is June 30th. 165 strike price for some puts, but small in size. All right. Apple, 81% in the calls. All right. A lot of, most of the calls are sweep orders. Do got some puts here and there. The block orders, calls as well. Tesla, 59% in the puts. A lot of block orders. We've seen some sweep orders, nothing big in size. This one here is puts for January 17, 2025. 150 strike price. Someone's making a big bet to the downside. All right. So, yeah, overall bearish. Look at these block orders all in the money puts. 416 strike price for puts. January 19, 2024. What? Anyways, here's the VIX. Wait, matter of fact, let me do NVDA. I'm sure you guys will like NVDA. Um... 75% in the calls, guys. Anything that sticks out to me? Yeah, 75% in the calls. Nothing, I don't really see anything with big size, but we do see a lot of sweep orders. Most of those calls are sweep orders. Pretty in-the-money calls, though. These are very in-the-money calls. All right. And uh, now, did we get to the VIX? Here's the VIX. 72% in the puts. All right, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope... I was able to, you know, give you guys some good trade ideas, philosophies with trading the price action, trying to keep us balanced. You know, a lot of people's filling us, trying to fill us with greed. They're trying to fill us with fear. I just want us to stay balanced, focus on our job, which is our P&L. We're not news reporters. We're not news reporters. All right. And the news, they're not our friends. The market makers, they're not our friends. But uncle is your uncle. All right. Have a great day. Memorial Weekend. Peace.